so good I feel so good It adds the flexibility to be able to change it you know, so move the wall around Yes, sir That's all right, we got a one minute rule in a place. We're going to start. I know, I know. She's so yeah, I'm not sure. I hope that the presentation is well. I have to say, this is not. Well, if there's anything about having one more group in the front, I would. Good morning. Can you hear me okay? Good, good. We, we uh, on our January 9th meeting, we had some feedback that people were having a hard time hearing. So we have all worked hard to make sure we improve. And I don't know that we will be perfect but I hope that we will improve. So if you're having a hard time hearing any of the people presenting, please just raise your hand. Uh, we want to make sure you are comfortable with the audio. Uh, I want to thank you all for coming. I want to call this meeting of the HOA2 board to order. Uh, the first thing that we will do is if you'll stand and follow and pled with our Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Like I said, we have a full agenda today, um, but before we get started, I'll go across the board, starting over on my far left, so everyone can introduce themselves so you'll know who's up at the table. So, Diane, you wanna say how do you do? Good morning, Diane Flores, Recording Secretary. Good morning, Walter Yazzi, General Manager. Sean Kreiderman, Director. Campbell Cheney, Treasurer. Matt Cambick, Assistant Treasurer. Don Grimm, Vice President. Mark Eckert, Director. Chuck Hill, Secretary. Okay, so we probably can all improve a bit, so just make sure you're speaking up. Thank you. Okay, uh, first on our agenda, hopefully you all have an agenda. I did not put a slide up. They were available at the table in the back. Uh, I'll remind you as we move through the agenda when there are changes. Um, I'll go through it really quickly. The first up will be Walter, uh, general manager's update. After that, um, Terry's going to give us, Terry Dempsey, our financial director, will give us an update. Uh, from there, Seth Cherry is here from uh, Invited, or some of us know him as Club Life. He's going to give us an update on golf. 
Um, then we've got um, some other issues, and I'll cover those a little bit later. But let's get started. Uh, Walter, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you, Dan. And good morning to all of you. My staff, myself, are excited for this new year coming up. And we just like to start off with showing our gratitude to you as residents and thank you for all the support that you give the staff in all of our different areas. I'm gonna go over some real quick highlights on what the staff is up to. And um, after I'm done here to finish up my presentation, we're gonna bring Ray Kuhn up, who's the assistant general manager, and he's gonna have a slideshow just to show you some items that we accomplished during the year of 2022. So here we go, accounting. Um, again, accounting is still working on putting together our revenue. Um, we look like we've got most of our stuff together for November. Again, um, this goes back to the new software package that we've brought on board. We're still working through many um, challenges with them. I know um, some of you have noticed that and we work daily with them. Accounting basically has daily calls with them as we uncover the different quirks in the accounting system. And I know fitness and food and beverage also have calls with them. So we're still engaged daily with them to resolve um, these issues. So you'll see some um, from finance or from, yeah, from Terry, he'll give you um, some November numbers here uh, later in the meeting. Administration, um, we ask that uh, if you have renters or guests that need passes, please make an appointment with the admin desk so that they can serve you or serve them better. Common areas, if you live in Unit 50, you know as you enter Unit 50, there's an area where that a lot of water pulls up during the rain. Um, common areas is now working on fixing that problem by installing a drain, so they've started that process. Fitness center is busy, um, very busy. Classes are full. Um, they actually hired a couple more folks there at the fitness center. They have a, <clears throat> another instructor for group fitness. And this is interesting. They hired a person that um, is skilled in meditation. So look forward to seeing some classes that have um, a meditation twist to it. Food and beverage, uh, Valentine's Day is open. Um, make sure you make reservations. And I, apparently they have two seatings for the Valentine's Day event. And the restaurants are busy. The other night I was over there and we actually were at the Mountain View Bar and Grill and we had to turn a couple folks away or we had to tell them that there was a 20 minute wait and then they had to decide on if they were gonna wait or uh, go elsewhere. So um, we do use Open Table at the restaurant. So if you're familiar with that, you can go on Open Table and um, make sure you make a reservation that way you make sure you get a, get a seat. Um, the Alan from the restaurant's working on some new menus, so <clears throat> we hope shortly to have uh, some new menus, some new options. You know, we try to keep the popular items and then we try to introduce uh, maybe something new, so look at, be looking for that. <clears throat> so mark your calendars for January 30th. Here at the Desert View Theater, the um, county, the state of the county. Um, so members of the county are going to come and give you a presentation about what's going on in the county. So again, that's Monday, January 30th at 10 o'clock. Uh, the next show down here is Shania Twain, and that's February 1st, and the tickets are available for that. And uh, you're all aware of uh, the cold weather. So of course the cold weather, if you're playing golf, you know affects golf and delay starts and items like that. So we've been dealing with that for probably over a month now with the cold weather. And the golf course is working towards, you know the big project starts in May, but there are some items for the Mountain View golf course um, reset or the construction project there. There are some projects that are, gonna, that are aimed to start here on February 1st. Um, you know, the cart path that goes behind the clubhouse and maybe some boring under some of the roads. So there is um, some activity you're going to start seeing in February in relation to the Mountain View Golf Course construction project. For Golf Ops, uh, fitting days have started and um, 
they're filling up, so the Callaway fitting day is already sold out. There's a couple other um, fitting days, so you know, look online and talk with the golf pros on if you're interested in fitting days, make sure you um, get in there if you want. Okay, so some interesting things with our human resources. So, you know, um, since Ray now is the assistant manager, we had to replace him. So his replacement actually started on Monday. His name is Dove. And um, so we've got him on board. Um, Ray is now training him on all the different activities that Ray used to do. So that's, that's a, that's a year-long training right there. So um, we did um, inter or have a onboarding with a executive chef for the preserve. So he's slated to start on February 1st. So um, we'll have a new executive chef at the preserve February 1st. Um, and if you hadn't heard, I don't know if we really announced it, but Anthony from Common Areas, who's sitting down in the front row here, he'll be leaving us uh, February 3rd. So um, we're looking to interview some folks to replace Anthony. So we're kind of sad to see Anthony go. He's done a great job here, and he's been a really good help in the community. So... But we wish Anthony the best of luck as he moves on to bigger and better things. Cool. <laughs> Thanks. I appreciate that because, you know, the support to the staff's important. So, Anthony, you got a hand there. I'm not sure how many of us get hands. Good job, Anthony. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Uh, marketing has rolled out a couple new things you may have noticed. Uh, the item they call My Holiday or My HOA Today. Um, you'll see that in the Monday messages and stuff, and it's a place for you to flip through quickly and see what's going on during the day. It's a more up to date, um, quick announcement uh, where, they post the, where they post, you know, just current announcements. So you can look at that and get a more up to date um, look at what's going on in the HOA. Uh, they also have um, produced what they call the new virtual flyer rack. In all of our buildings, we have racks that have the different flyers, that have the different shows, the different fitness classes. Now they've made that virtually, so you can also um, just look online and get those if you, don't, if you don't pick up a flyer at the building. And one more item here to wrap it up. So patrol, if you're aware, patrol has started in conjunction with HOA1 a um, seminar they call a senior safety seminar and they had their first event, um, I think it was last week or so, that went well. They have other events planned throughout the year, so look for that from patrol, the senior safety seminars. Those are very informational, just focused on information that the residents um, may like. So that's a quick overview of what staff's doing and I'll let Ray kind of top it off with an overview of 2022's projects. Yeah, thank you, Walter. Uh, good morning to everyone. Uh, actually, could we go to the first slide? This is the last slide, I believe. <laughs> All right, thank you, Ray. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to walk us through a pictorial view of some of the larger projects that we accomplished in 2022. Most of these are what we call reserve projects. Uh, every three years, um, there is a third party independent study of all of our existing assets. Uh, and they go through and um, look at end of life uh, and recommend um, replacement. Um, so there were many of those in 2022. We, we didn't complete all that was suggested. Uh, I think you'll see it later, maybe Terry will cover this. We actually pushed uh, nearly $700,000 of projects uh, to a later date. And the reason we do that is we apply, you know, logic and science um, to the situation and decide uh, the priorities based on those parameters. And we decide those that we're gonna execute on now or later or even push them to the next, uh, you know, eight, 10 years out on whatever is needed. So we, uh, yeah, we don't do every project that's in the reserve. Um, so starting here with our comprehensive 
wall maintenance program. We have lots and lots of walls. Um, we have a five-year rotation where we work through maintenance and um, repair and painting of those walls. Um, there are walls that are dictated as do not maintain. They are typically walls that are, uh, there's no visibility from the streets or from your homes, uh, just desert um, behind them. So they, are, they show up as the red lines in the diagram to the right. Um, sometimes we have unplanned uh, wall repair to do, as you see in the picture on the bottom left. Uh, this is off of Edwin Road, where there is an intersection and a stop sign, and someone didn't navigate the stop sign properly and went through our wall. So <laughs> occasionally we have unplanned activities. Uh, the picture on the bottom right is just routine maintenance, um, stucco, repair work, and then painting. Next slide, please. Uh, in preparation for TEI, uh, we did install some new servers, uh, which you see there in the picture on the right. <coughs> Next slide. We have a comprehensive HVAC replacement program. Uh, we have 86 rooftop split systems uh, for our HVAC. This is a photograph of us replacing one of those units early in 2022. We didn't get to replace all the planned HVAC units due to uh, our supply chain. We signed a contract in March for replacement of five units. Uh, we got two of those replaced in December of this year. They're just simply not available like many other things these days. Um, we apply, again, um, some parameters to how we select and prioritize which units get replaced. We have um, about 30 units with R22 refrigerant in them, which is now outdated and antiquated. Um, so that's a given priority. Other priorities would be given to areas where there are single units servicing a particular area, like small conference rooms. Uh, there's just a single unit, and if it goes down, um, we're in trouble. But at the ballroom, for example, at Mountain View, we have 18 parallel units. So they receive a lower priority based on the fact that if one of them goes down, we have 17 backup units. And uh, so anyway, uh, long and short of it is that we do apply uh, some logic and, uh, and some science behind this. Our leader, uh, Walter here, presenting um, a couple of the awards that we received uh, last spring, and then on the right, he's fearless. Uh, this is a photograph that we captured of him uh, during Halloween, and so I thought it'd be fun to share this. We are allowed to have a little bit of fun, right? <laughs> Nice. I didn't know we had dress up there. Yeah. <laughs> you have dress up? Every day you dress up there. We completed uh, a lot of restroom renovation, um, including the golf courses, uh, the mesquite restrooms, um, and uh, late in the year, the pavilion restrooms that are at the Desert View Pool. Note the small tile on the floor for uh, anti skid protection. Last year, uh, we also did um, a coating on the flat roofs, the modified bitumen. Um, we did a, a silicone uh, roof coating, which is waterproof and guaranteed for 20 years. Uh, and sometimes, again, we encounter surprises. In this case, uh, the bees were present and not angry that we were interfering with their home. Landscape upgrade. Uh, here you see some of Anthony's work. Um, flower, adding flowers in, in the spring and then working on some drainage. Um, we have lots of, of that type of work to do. And uh, Anthony's team is out there in the, in the hot and cold, as it turns out, and uh, getting the job done. 
We have lots and lots of roadways. I think Walter has told me that we have nearly 50 miles of roads that we need to maintain. Uh, last year we replaced uh, the pavement on the upper end of uh, Mountain View Boulevard and we will be doing the lower section of that in 2023. We also do seal coat and crack seal as you see in a couple of the other photographs. So this is again um, comprehensive and on a rotational basis um, we pick um, the areas that are in most need. There is a study also done, I believe once every three to five years, um, independent study of our roadways. In fact, they come out and they photograph, I believe it's a five foot segment of the full width of the road. Uh, sorry about that. <laughs> uh, this mic is a little bit sensitive for sure. Uh, anyway, so th there's a lot of effort put into this in deciding um, the priorities for the roadways that are in need of work. We had a big surprise at uh, Preserve Golf Course last year. One of the water mains, and I think this is a, I don't know, 20 inch pipe water main, um, which created a nice big uh, culvert for us. Uh, we were on it um, and uh, got that repaired in a timely manner. But um, as you know, there is um, aging golf courses and they require a lot of maintenance, including sometimes the, uh, the full resets that we're going to do at Mountain View this year. Pickleball courts. Uh, we added uh, eight pickleball courts. Largely this was done by the pickleball club at the time, or at least the planning phases of that was done by the pickleball club. It's now an amenity, as most of you know. We maintain it on a daily basis. Uh, it's a beautiful facility. I like pickleball, so I'm uh, particularly impressed with this facility. Tennis courts at Mountain View um, are in need of repair. We paved them a few years back, maybe five years ago, um, but turns out that it's not really a very effective way of maintaining those courts because they get water under or in between the substrate and the asphalt and they were causing cracking and uh, a safety problem. So we've taken the action to build post-tension courts, which is basically the latest and greatest technology in building courts. Uh, we've done two of them at Mountain View. They're now open, and uh, I see lots of fun happening out there. Here's our staff hard at work, our kitchen staff, our appliance technician, and others. Desert View, um, as you know and now see, we replaced the carpet in here uh, this past year as well as the seating. Um, it's a beautiful facility, one that I think um, we can do more with and, and hope to get that um, moving forward, going forward. Um, I talked to some folks, I attended the uh, the uh, Earth, Wind, and Fire concert. It was tremendous. Um, and talking to some folks outside of Saddlebrook, asking uh, if they've ever been to an event here, and they said, no, geez, we didn't even know that this was open to the public. So um, it's a wonderful facility, one that I've always been impressed with and, uh, and look forward to, to doing more here. Uh, in the fitness center, we were asked to provide a water fountain with a bottle filler capability, which makes good sense, and so we got that accomplished, as well as some new chairs in our lobby. Um, interesting place, right? Um, you know, Saddlebrook is a wonderful community. It's um, some pl a place that I enjoy working, and uh, occasionally we get passerbys or visitors that uh, are particularly interesting to me. Um, I don't think I've ever seen a bigger rattlesnake. Uh, I don't know that there's one exists on earth. That thing is huge. Uh, that was captured in our common area maintenance facility. <laughs> so, uh, and even last evening as I was leaving, this uh, buck mule deer in the center of the picture uh, was walking through our Mountain View parking lot as I was leaving the facility last evening. So I particularly enjoy this. Uh, I hope you do too. Thank you for your time.
Thank you, Ray. Um, is there any comments from the board for Ray uh, on his presentation? Nice job. Keep up nice job. Okay. Good. Thank you, Ray. Um, we're going to keep on trucking here. The next uh, presenter is Terry Dempsey. Uh, he'll give us our November financials. Okay, thanks, Dan. Good morning, everybody. So Ray gave you all the good news and um, how nice everything is. Now I get to sh give you the bill. Um, one of the things we did to uh, cut costs a little bit was we had the lights turn off this morning. So um, Walter said, no, you're not allowed to do that. So we had to put them back on. But I try. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to go over November financials. And the reason why it's only November, not December, is... Um, we we're having some hiccups with TE, well, bigger than hiccups, issues with TEI, which is our new software, and getting all that structured and put together in a, in a reasonable manner so that it's it's legible. Um, there's a, a lot a lot that goes into that uh, from behind the scenes that people don't see. Uh, we have to do a lot of rec reconciliation of revenue and know where all the revenue is coming from. Make sure we're collecting the right revenue amounts. Make sure the expenses are going into the right buckets and. There's a, a lot behind that. So we're a little bit behind on that, so I apologize for that. David Castro, our uh, assistant, or our controller, he's been working his, uh, his butt off uh, trying to get everything set up right and moving right in the, in the right direction. He's trying to help all the residents with uh, any billing issues they're having and, and things of that nature. So uh, we appreciate your patience, and uh, we'll get over this uh, shortly. So uh, with that... Um, we'll, go, we'll go through November, um, November, uh, let's see, so for November, uh, commu our service uh, fees were $539,000 for the, for the month. Uh, for the year, we're at $5.9 million, just a little bit over budget. Uh, other income is $13,000 uh, on a budget of $11,000, so that's about $1,000 uh, over budget. Um, with other income, um, other income for November was $1,000 better than budget. Year to date is better than budget by 36,000. New home sales for November were three, bringing year to date to 33, and the total uh, to 3,142. Uh, we budgeted for 25 for the year and came in at 33. There were eight resales in November, bringing the total to 175. And for the year, we budgeted 186. Uh, income subsidy before depreciation for the month of November was a profit of 190,000. Is $40,000 better than budget. Uh, restaurants had a profit of 9,000, which was 35,000 better than budget. And golf had a profit of 2,000, which was uh, $40,000 uh, less than budget. Fitness theater lifestyle had a subsidy of $12,000, and that was worse than budget by about $2,000. So. Okay, if you could put the next slide up, please. Oh, sorry. Back to, back, back. One more. All right, F and B revenue. Here we go. Uh, F and B revenue was three hundred twelve thousand for the month, on a budget of three thirteen. So pretty close. Year to date, we're at two point nine million on a budget of three point one. Uh, so that's under budget by two hundred twenty thousand. Cost of sales came in at 112,000 for November on a budget of 116. Year to date, we're at a million 133 on a budget of million 170 for cost of sales. Our labor came in at 154 on a budget of 182. And year to date, we're pretty close to being even, uh, about $13,000 uh, under budget. Uh, net income for the restaurants was $9,000 on a budget of uh, a loss of $26,000 or a subsidy of $26,000. So they were over budget by about 35000 
year to date we're struggling um, was three hundred ninety four thousand uh, dollars subsidy on a budget of two hundred seventy one thousand dollars subsidy so restaurants is about one hundred and twenty two thousand um, dollars worse than budget okay next slide for golf At golf November golf annuals were 113,000 on a budget of 124. Uh, year to date is a million three hundred two thousand on a budget of one million three sixty seven. As far as annuals go, uh, annuals sold for 2022 were 378, and for 220 uh, sorry for uh, uh, 2023 the annuals sold were 340 so far. Okay. Um, total golf revenue was 200 and, or sorry, daily fees were 94,000 on a budget of 102. Uh, year to date, they're at 901 on a budget of 962. Play cards were 4,400 on a budget of 29,000. And um, year to date was 289 on a budget of 315. So total golf revenue was 277,000 on a budget of 314,000. And uh, that's worse than budget by thirty-seven thousand. The uh, year-to-date golf revenue was two million eight eighty-nine, and a budget of two million nine eighty-seven. So that's a ninety-seven thousand dollars worse than uh, budget. Uh, total golf operations uh, contribution. Before we get into the golf maintenance part, um, golf operations had a contribution of one hundred eighty-nine thousand and a budget of 221000 so it's $32,000 uh, worse than budget. And then for a year to date, there were two million one hundred three and a budget of $2,191,000, <clears throat> excuse me. And uh, that's about $88,000 uh, worse than budget. Uh, maintenance, golf maintenance was $187,000 um, actual on a budget of one seventy nine. It's about $8,000 uh, worse than budget. Um, maintenance for year to date was two million nine on a budget of two million seven, which is one hundred sixty four thousand dollars worse than budget. Um, for the net income for golf was about two thousand dollars on a budget on a budget of forty two thousand, so about forty thousand uh, dollars below budget. And then year to date is eight hundred seven thousand dollar subsidy on a budget of five hundred fifty four thousand dollars subsidy. It's kind of a golf recap. Okay, um, next is cash. Where we at with our cash? Um, so on operating funds for November, at the end of November, we had four million one hundred sixty six thousand in operating funds. Um, reserve funds, we had 4999000 And then we had, uh, in the capital improvement funds, uh, $1,612,000 for total cash and investments of $10,778,000 at the end of November. So some of these slides um, are changed from the way we used to do them, um, just to give you guys a little bit more information, you know what's going on a little bit more. Okay, next slide. So that was the past, that's what's happened in November. What we're gonna walk through real quick here is uh, the planned Q1 expenditures for the reserves. So in administration, uh, we have computers and personal computers, including iPads. They'll be phased in at about $22,000 in the first quarter. Uh, furnishings in the conference room, kitchen lobby, about $6,000 is budgeted for that. Um, we do have a new refrigerator in the uh, kitchen, uh, in the small little break room we have in the conference, in the, in the admins. Uh, so that was kind of nice. Uh, the other one's kind of beat up and nasty. Um, computers, some more computers, uh, another $5,000 for admin. Uh, Mountain View Clubhouse interior uh, designer fee for the restrooms, carpet, and the entire interior is budgeted at 25000 uh, some new china at 20,600. At the Desert View Clubhouse, there's uh, air handling units. Um, rooftop heating and cooling units are 130,000. These are the one Ray was talking about and whether we can get them in or not is another story. Um, and when they come in. 
Uh, sound system for the fitness center is budgeted at $32,000. And uh, a few more handling, uh, a few more air handling units at 17,000 for the desert view. Uh, preserve, preserve clubhouse, air handling units, again, $45,000. Uh, utility vehicle is a Honda Rancher for $6,000. Uh, more maintenance equipment at Mountain View. Um, there's uh, $42,000 for a tractor, another $40,000 for a tractor, a couple of club cars at $12,500 each. Uh, maintenance equipment at Preserve, the tractor, $40,000. Planet Air, I'm not quite sure what that is, to be honest with you. <laughs> um, club, cor club cars, another $12,566. And uh, the Mountain View Golf Course Renovation Debt Service, which will be $238,000. And for the first quarter, it gives us total reserve fund of uh, $780,000 spend. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, capital expenditures from operating fund. Uh, we got common area needs workmen, uh, which is $33,000. Uh, there's a one-ton roller for golf at $20,000. Uh, common area has a trencher, power broom, and I think the stump grinder. I think those attachments go to that workman, if I'm not mistaken. And then there's a tennis ball machine, which is uh, actually $9,500. And then there's a $3,000 cost sharing with that, so that gets us to $6,500. Uh, so capital expenditures from the operating fund will be $79,000. And then the infrastructure for the new golf carts will be $328,000. Um, so that gives us an operating fund of 79000 and uh, total is actually, there's a calculation error there. Those should be summed together. So about $400,000. And that's what I have. All right. Thank you, Terry. Um, does the board have any questions for Terry? The only thing that I would mention in the capital expenditures, the CIF fund, where he talked about infrastructure for new golf carts, that is a golf cart cover, um, roof, if you will, to cover the new golf carts we're receiving this year that was approved by the 2022 board early in 2022. So eventually, and there's been a lot of supply chain, I think, with that issue, but eventually those both at the preserve and Mountain View will have covers to protect those carts, which are new investments for us as well. So that's the only comment I'll make, but if you all have questions, we will take questions at the end after we adjourn. So keep a note. Um, I assume Terry will still be around if you have a financial question. Uh, but thank you. No other board questions. We'll move on. Okay. Next up is uh, Seth uh, Cherry, which is our uh, person, if you will, the head honcho man of all seasons for Invited. And he is directly in involved with Saddlebrook and is responsible for the Saddlebrook golf courses, both Preserve and uh, Mountain View. So, Seth, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you for coming. I'm going to use this one if I could so that I can. You don't can have to. Move it around. Is it work? On? Oh, it is on. Okay, great. Just stand close to it or you get yelled at by All people right. on the board. I don't want to get yelled at. <clears throat> well, thank you all for uh, having me here today and inviting me to your meeting. My name is Seth Churry, and I'm with Invited Club Management. Some of you may know us as Club Corp. Um, we went through a, a rebranding and a name change uh, recently. Um, so I want to take a little bit of time and just uh, give you an update on uh, the time that we've been involved here uh, with your properties and just uh, discuss some of the progress that's been made. So our team is, uh, is really, really excited about 
um, all of the progress and, and, and what's been um, completed um, over the last five or six months, and that's what I'm going to give you some report on. But um, I'd be remiss if I didn't recognize uh, Matt and Paul. Uh, Matt and Paul have been fantastic through this entire process, um, this transition, uh, very um, collaborative and team oriented, and so a lot of the progress and success that we've had over the, the last five or six months, they definitely um, deserve a lot of credit there. So thank you to, to both of them. Um, I was told I have about 20 minutes um, for this presentation, so I'm going to move very quickly because there's a lot here to cover. Uh, one thing that I did want to make you aware is when we started, we started in um, about August or so, so we've been involved for uh, five and a half months or so, the number one objective that we were given was to help the improvement of the financial performance of golf. So as you, um, you know, review the information that I present, kind of keep that in mind, that through this uh, early part of our engagement, we've tried to make, um, you know, a lot, be very productive and make a lot of progress, but with that in mind, for sure, is improving financial performance. So I'll give you a quick overview on the sales and marketing front. Sales and marketing has definitely been an important part of our engagement because that's how we drive revenue in golf. So we've focused a lot on that area. Uh, number one is we developed a sales and marketing plan. It was a very robust plan that was submitted and approved by the board. Uh, we developed an annual passholder campaign we en uh, enrolled Saddlebrook into our X-Life Playaway Club Benefits Program, and there's going to be a little bit more information on e each of these items as I go through the, the presentation. We develop, uh, as part of that, we did host an in-person town hall presentation. Uh, we developed a uh, 2023 marketing budget. And uh, there were some efficiencies included in there as well. Implemented the new homeowner outreach program. Uh, we booked and coordinated a photo and video sh uh, shoot, which, um, which came out fantastically. We'll show you some of those photos. Created a social media content calendar, which includes frequent posts and, um, and comments and messages. Uh, collaborated with the Saddlebrook marketing team on all golf related topics and we have bi-weekly calls with the Saddlebrook uh, team just to uh, collaborate and um, strategize and we developed a, a lead generation forms um, both uh, digital and print and trying to collect all of the um, annual campaign data. Uh, we developed a punch card campaign and um, we developed a month-by-month uh, -month, uh, sales and marketing um, planning document. So the an annual pass annual pass holder campaign. So one thing I will comment. So as we started in August, uh, annual memberships was a really hot topic, and the main reason was there was a uh, survey done of our annual members and based on the Mountain View renovation and the closing of that property for some time, there was an expectation that we may not be able to renew a large chunk of our annual members from 2022 and 2023, which is a, a big amount of revenue. And so we focused a great deal of our time in developing a campaign to not only renew our 2022 annual members, but also uh, bring new members to, to, to 2023. And thankfully, we were, we were very successful. We developed two campaigns. One was around renewals, and then one was around new annuals. So we had a, um, one of the uh, incentives was if you joined early, then we were able to freeze your uh, rate from 2022 going into 2023, obviously a very big incentive. And all of this was approved and supported by the board. We marketed through multiple single purpose emails and newsletters. We developed video messages, thanks to Mike and Matt, um, regarding the annual pass details. Um, we developed a, a sales call blitz 
um, did a lot of engagement, and um, we offered complimentary access to our X Life benefits, which we're going to talk a little bit about. That's Invited's network of clubs. We mailed over 1,300 letters, uh, and, uh, including annual pass rack cards to residents about renewing. We uh, sent a survey to non-renewing annuals from 2022 to understand what their reasons were for not renewing. Um, so that was all just under the renewal front. Under the new uh, annual members, we uh, developed Facebook ads, um, posted those to the Mountain View and Preserve pages. Uh, we developed an ad with the Arizona golfer regarding annual passes. Um, and then we um, had a really strong tracking system. And this is something that we developed with Matt and his team uh, in both of the pro shops. So I think that was really successful. Here's just a couple of uh, examples of some of the collateral that we developed. So you have an annual pass holder rack card here uh, to the left. And then there's also a letter here uh, to the right that, um, you know, this was what we mentioned was uh, sent to all to 1300 residents. And then you can see a couple of the videos there to the right. Hopefully many of you received those as well. Here's some more annual pass holder campaign collateral. You have paid Facebook ads uh, and the results on the bottom. So we do a lot of uh, analytics to kind of understand what our investment is in social media. And, uh, and then these are the, uh, the tracking sheets I mentioned to the right. So, okay, so what were our results after all that time and effort? Um, thankfully, they were uh, better than expected. So our results um, through to date, basically, were about 1.3 million. Uh, our budget was 1.2 million. So it's about $100,000 improvement over what we budgeted. And then when you compare to 2022, we're about flat. At the moment, we're, it looks like we're about $6,000, so about 1.3 million, pretty close. Um, but that's a really big achievement because if you recall what we mentioned in terms of the survey, we were concerned that we might lose 50 to 60% of that revenue from 2022. So we were able to really match um, in 23 what we did in 22. So that was a, that was a huge win. And um, I know it was a big concern of ours as well as the, the board. Moving on here, the next big product is punch cards. And that's something that we really just started um, in terms of offering because the annuals, really that campaign went through the end of the year. And um, there's been a couple different approaches in terms of how we've marketed that. We've done that through paid social media campaigns that we launched in January, included a, a sizzle video that was developed through that photo shoot I mentioned earlier, and it highlighted the punch card offerings, and, uh, and then multiple uh, social media campaigns. And then we also did another, uh, or planned to do in February, I guess, an Arizona golfer ad uh, highlighting punch cards. So really, the bulk of the punch card business is going to be um, through the first quarter and really goes through the end of the year. Uh, but in terms of compared, uh, the re comparing the results to date through a year ago, we're about $5,000 ahead. We're at uh, you know, 296,000 compared to prior year of 291,000. So um, so far so good, but we've got a long way to go. We do have a fairly healthy budget in 2023. Um, that was something that you know we anticipated a shortfall on the um, annual membership, and we were expecting to make that up on the punch card. So we didn't have that shortfall. Um, we actually exceeded on the annual. So hopefully we can also uh, achieve this punch card budget as well. I mentioned uh, X Life Playaway. Uh, that is our uh, network within Invited Club Management, and it's something that was offered to all annual members. 
uh, it, in terms of an incentive, we included X life benefits on a complimentary, complimentary basis for the remainder of 2022, depending on when you signed. Um, we had uh, brochures, posters around the club. I mentioned we did the town hall presentation. Uh, we did that um, for the residents and had a pretty good turnout. So this is a little bit of the collateral and um, what we use to promote that program. And then the next slide, this will give you a little bit of the results. So the actual benefits began in October. And really the point of offering this program is to, number one, it provides additional value to Saddlebrook annual members because they get to play around the country and locally. But it also creates a revenue opportunity for the network members to come here to Saddlebrook and play. So we've only been at this now for two or three months, and we've had uh, Saddlebrook members play 46 rounds of golf around the country and uh, play locally uh, 12 rounds, so that's Skyline, Oro Valley. And then we also have Arizona Sands Club, so some of the members uh, took advantage of that opportunity and made some reservations there. In terms of incoming revenue here at Saddlebrook, we had about 125 uh, rounds plus 23 guests, so about 55,080 in golf revenue. We obviously expect that to grow quite a bit throughout the year but um, you know, off to a good start in terms of uh, usage. One area that we feel like is a, is a big opportunity just based on kind of historically um, what's been, how it's been managed and that is new homer, homeowner outreach. As you know, we have a very large community here in Saddlebrook so there's a lot of new homeowners coming into the community and we wanna do all we can to uh, reach out to them and engage and uh, hopefully uh, convert them into golfers. And so what we've done here is we have, a, we created a, a postcard mailer and sent that to all new homeowners in Saddlebrook uh, 1, Saddlebrook 2, as well as Saddlebrook Ranch. Um, we worked with uh, one of our vendors that we've typically dealt with and they are providing new homeowner closing lists and uh, we're using that list to uh, market to each of them. Um, we have a, a mailing list that uh, Matt is using and his team to be able to engage and communicate with them on. And then we've offered these new homeowners a member for a day opportunity to experience the property, um, the golf, lunch, et cetera. And then in addition, the golf committee, um, we're partnering with them and, uh, and they are in the midst of an outreach campaign uh, where they personally are reaching out to these new homeowners and uh, inviting them out to, um, to golf and to lunch. I mentioned the uh, photo shoot. Um, that was a, a really a big success. We used a vendor that we're accustomed to working with, um, got some great pricing. We're able to share some of the travel expenses with our other properties in town, so it was very efficient. Um, they developed uh, a number of uh, some photography related to the pro shop, to obviously the golf courses and some various lifestyle, lifestyle shoot uh, shots. Um, they also did a two and a half minute sizzle video with a uh, drone. Um, very, very cool. Um, came out great. Um, what else here? Um, boom, boom, boom. Did headshots of the team and we developed on the website kind of a, a meet your staff um, to build out of our website. So that was a really nice addition. And, um, and so we obviously have shared that with the Saddlebrook 2 marketing team and, and we're utilizing a lot of that new photography and video. Um, another really key piece of our strategy is just our social media. And uh, we've really cranked up um, our activation and usage in terms of social media. And one way we've done that is through the development of a, what we call a content calendar. And uh, that's something that has, um, it, it basically schedules out assignments on when posts are gonna go out and what the targets are gonna be for each of those. So very organized and very professional approach. And um, you can see just some of the examples here. It's kind of hard to see, it's a little small. But um, 
uh, we've received a lot of really good feedback on uh, our social media. Human resources, this has definitely been one that has uh, required a lot of time and effort um, by not only our invited team, but certainly Matt and Paul, they have really done a great job um, just working with our team, but also their individual uh, staff. So we transitioned 59 employees from Saddlebrook to, to invited uh, employment, and we did that through a series of on-site meetings, as well as you could imagine a number of uh, phone calls and emails. Um, we had some of our invited human resource staff here, and um, and then in addition, there were uh, a n we also rolled out our health benefit program. So nine of the 14 eligible employees that um, were enrolled previously have now moved over to invited. There's still an opportunity for those others, I believe, to to jump in if they choose to. But in talking to um, Paul this morning, it sounds like some of them had alternative options for health benefits and they went that direction. Um, in addition, there's some employees that um, are gonna become eligible for health benefits, so they will have the opportunity to come on board. Uh, we have a new uh, payroll and time management system that has been implemented and um, is active. There was a, uh, a transition uh, payment plan that went in place as a concession for this transition that was approved by the board. That has um, been processed. Uh, and then in addition, I just thought I'd add this, we have a, an upcoming uh, general manager meeting in Atlanta that Matt Hudson is actually gonna join us, so I'm excited for him to get some exposure to uh, our company and all the tools and resources that are available to him. So uh, kind of coming towards the end of the presentation here, planning and strategy overview. So this is uh, a number a, a number of um, projects that our team has been working on, and a lot of this has been in conjunction with the board. So developed our 2023 business plan. Uh, this is an obligation under our management contract. We actually got that done a month early just based on the calendar of the uh, HOA. Uh, we developed a five-year financial pl plan, and uh, that include a comparison to our pro forma. Um, working with Campbell on that, and that's still kind of a work in progress, um, but um, have several versions of that already. Uh, let's see, we, we uh, participated in a uh, Mountain View construction meeting, uh, participated in the golf committee meeting and provided some feedback on a revised job description. Um, we've done a, uh, one thing that the board really challenged us to do is to think of, um, you know, no stone goes uncovered uh, or unturned and make sure that we're looking at all possible alternatives on how we operate golf, again, with the goal of improving the financial performance. So our team with Matt and Paul have done a lot of brainstorming sessions. How could we operate these clubs differently and elevate the performance? And so we went through that session. We have a couple of ideas that we're currently modeling and um, we want to evaluate, you know, what we think the potential is of those ideas. But um, we just want to make sure that uh, whatever it is we're doing with golf and, and whatever future strategy we have, it's, uh, it's in the best possible uh, efforts for, um, you know, bottom line performance. And uh, let's see. And then in terms of just our obligations, um, I'm, I have one more slide on that, but uh, I'll talk a little bit about the management contract and just our compliance to that. Uh, one of the big opportunities with our company that I think appealed to the board was just our purchasing power. Our company's the largest owner and operator of clubs in the country, so we have um, terrific national account pricing. And uh, we implemented that with Saddlebrook immediately when we got started, and uh, it's really paid dividends. Um, one of the biggest areas that we were really immediately able to save was on uh, Toro equipment. So we're a, uh, one of the largest uh, buyers of Toro equipment in the country. We were able to get Saddlebrook under our Toro pricing for a previous purchase that had been made, and uh, substantial savings um, are gonna come from it. 
And uh, if you compare um, what our pricing is uh, for the specific uh, order to the manufacturer's uh, retail price, it was about a $400,000 savings. Um, now, we don't know exactly what Saddlebrook would have paid if they would have paid the MSRP or something less than that. That's, that's kind of uh, unclear. Um, but the fact is that we were able to save Saddlebrook hundreds of thousands of dollars. So that was really, really positive. That happened very quickly in early part of our engagement. Um, in addition, some other savings was uh, in the area of seed. So our seed pricing came down through our partnership. And then there all, we also made some adjustments to what we were overseeding. So there, there was a, a pretty good savings there. Um, our or early order for uh, fertility and chemical purchase plan, typically there's um, about a twenty dollars to $30,000 savings per 18-hole course there. We, you know, that's to be determined in terms of Saddlebrook. Uh, Callaway's pricing improved quite a bit. Um, we did um, agree to allow HOA2 uh, to purchase through our national account pricing for common area equipment. And, uh, and then we purchased some food and beverage vehicles as well. So substantial savings um, on, the, uh, on that side of our engagement. And then last slide here. So I, I put this in here um, because we have this, you know, very complicated management agreement. And, um, you know, I, at times I get the sense that maybe there's a lack of clarity about our uh, contribution or our value that we bring in terms of golf and um, you know is this really worth it you know are these guys really doing what they say they were gonna do and uh, and so I just added this slide um, you know we are in compliance with everything you know under our management agreement we feel like the results in five and a half months have been tremendous um, we've been paid about fifty five thousand dollars to date um, which relative to um, all of the contribution I think is probably a pretty good investment for um, the for Saddlebrook um, but you can see um, these are all you know some of the obligations oversight and management of club and golf course operations uh, preparation of a, a sales and marketing plan operations budget capital budget uh, implementation of annual pass holder uh, campaign HR recruiting support um, the uh, in uh, employment of the club staff, um, the Avendra program, that's the purchasing program, uh, the X Life Play Away, and, uh, and then any of our um, you know, management of golf tournaments and merchandise sales. That was all specifically uh, named in our management agreement. And so we, um, we just wanted to make sure everybody understood that we were in complete compliance there. But that's all I have. I, I think I went 22 minutes or so, so I apologize for that. Um, and I think you wanted to open up thank, for a couple questions. Yeah, thank you, Seth. Uh, great, great review. Um, I will say that I didn't see this before, but you have a really good looking staff here. Those pictures are outstanding. I've never seen Paul without a hat on before, so that was, that was interesting. But again, thank you very much. It was a good review for the front end and the back end, obviously, of what you guys are doing. And the notion that we've, we've seen almost 60,000 of revenue from the Club Life Play Away program by itself was, was quite interesting. Um, is there any questions from the board? You guys, he's, uh, he's the expert, so if you do have a question. Um, I will open it up. Typically, we'd keep on going and then have questions at the end. Seth, Matt, and Paul are got other stuff they're going to be doing, and so they're going to take off here pretty quickly. I'll open it up for just a couple of questions for Seth, if anybody has one. If not, don't hesitate to ask questions in the open session at the end as well. So if you have a question, Come on down, state your name and lot, and um, we'll try to. Can hang 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 on, I, and I appreciate what you, I can I can pretty much hear you. 
The problem we have is if you go to a microphone, it doesn't get recorded. So the recording doesn't pick you up, and I know people at home will be interested in your question, so we really need to use these. Thank you. I understand that uh, a contractor your name? I'm has sorry, been your selected. name? My name is Dick Rouse, Thank Unit you. 25. I understand that a contractor has been selected for the first phase of this program. Is that correct? Are you talking about the Mountain View Mountain reset? View. Yes, yes uh, Dick. That contract was initiated in, I think, July of 2022. The my, company is my, my, my question is this. Who was involved in the vetting of the contractors for this project? A variety of people. The board, uh, the, the, the um, golf operations, certainly. Uh, finance was involved. A lot of people. Seth, has, has your company had any experience working with this contractor? I, Correct me if I'm wrong here, Dan, or anybody else on the board. I believe that that contract was signed or was about to be signed, I think, before we got involved. Right. So um, I've met with them. Um, our director of maintenance, uh, Jay Abbott, uh, met with them. Um, they're a... a they're really a local contractor, so we don't have any personal experience with them. But I mean, so far it's been positive, and uh, I know that Paul, I believe Paul, you've had some personal experience work with them previously, and Paul definitely recommended them. Will Paul be uh, directly involved in supervising their work? Yes, he'll be. He'll be partially. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah, partial oversight there for sure. We, we He's got also, two golf courses to maintain. We also, also yes. have a contract, Dick, with the architect, and in that contract is oversight as well. So we actually have Paul's kind of the main focus from our perspective, uh, using invited as well as the architect is right in the middle of all this whole process. A lot of oversight in okay, that thank process. You. Thank you for that question. Any other question? Wow, oh, oh, got one, cool. Do you want to come on down? Thank you. Yeah, this is related to golf, hopefully. My name is Steve Lindquist, Unit 45, I'm sorry. Yeah, Unit 45, Lot 98. Thank you, um, Steve. The question I have basically, you know, there's a big number that jumps out at me. Over $807,000 were subsidies on golf this year. To my knowledge, I've been here seven years. That's an all-time record, and it looks like it's only going one way. It's up. I, I'm, you know, I don't know anything about the company here that has come in here other than, I guess the, the question I'm saying is, every year we come to these meetings and we have the goals and objectives of reducing these subsidies on golf. Every year they continue to go up. So now we've got some new people involved. Hopefully they'll be able to help out. The question I have, is there, is there a, some type of document that has been generated that shows what our expectations are when you throw in the cost of hiring the organization that's running this and our current other ongoing costs, is there, is there a real sense that we're gonna make any dent and turn this number around and get it back down to some significant degree? Or are we continuing on the same path of every year we can expect to see bigger subsidies applied to golf? I'm happy to um, Steve. Thank you for, for the question. Um, I don't know if Seth is, um, do you wanna, you wanna go after it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you, I, I think it's a very smart question, obvious question, and um, yes, I mean that is our whole purpose for being here is exactly that, is to reduce that subsidy. I think one thing that we should make sure that we highlight is 2023's budget, and the subsidy is unique because that is uh, significantly impacted by the Mountain View renovation. So, um, you know, when we do our five-year planning, 
2023 is kind of a blip on the radar. It's a, it's a, it's a big pop up in terms of losses. Um, and there's a lot of reason for that, but the majority of it is just revenue loss, right? So when the golf course is shut down, there's significant amount of revenue loss, which means it's going to drive your losses up. So 2023 is an anomaly and it's associated with the construction. And as we do our five-year planning, that's something we're working closely with the board as well as Campbell, um, is, is of course that subsidy needs to be decreased. Otherwise, you know, my team doesn't need to be involved. And uh, we understand that and uh, that's our whole point. And we have, you know, significant confidence that it will. The success that we experienced in 2023 with our annual campaign, you know, combined with Matt and Paul and his team, it gives me more confidence than ever before that there is a tremendous upside, especially when you couple it with this, this fantastic renovation that's taking place. We're gonna have a much better product to market and sell. And uh, so yes, I uh, have a strong confidence that the subsidy will reduce, even taking into account the fees that we are paid. All right, thank you. Thanks, Steve, for the question. By the way, just as a side comment, Steve, all of the cost associated to our relationship with Invited is rooted in our budgets. So they're all there. I, you know, it may not stand out exactly as you had, had suggested, but they are there. They're accounted for and they're identified. So there's nothing, it's all transparent in that reaction. Seth. Thank you. Uh, any other board comments or anything? No? Seth, thank you. Appreciate thank you, you everyone. being here. Thank you. I was hoping you would bring warm weather, though, because that is a revenue enhancer here right now. <laughs> oh, my Lord. Okay. We're on uh, track. Don't know if we're on time, but we're on track. The next uh, item on our agenda is to approve the board working meetings uh, minutes from January 9, 2023. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Sean, so moved. Second? Second. Any discussion? Any discussion from uh, the attendants, people in attendance? If none, uh, we'll go ahead and vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 All against, move the uh, motion carries. The minutes have been approved. Thank you very much. We have a little bit of other business to take care of real quickly. Uh, we have a, a unanimous written consent. And for those of you that may not know what that means, some board business is taken, uh, taken between meetings, between open meetings. So there's just stuff you gotta do and, and sometimes it occurs that we just have to go ahead and make a decision as a board. A uni unanimous written consent is a written document which is posted online for your review and it allows the board to move forward if there is a unanimous decision. If it's not unanimous, it has to be at an open board meeting and uh, board members can talk about it. This particular document covered uh, new members going into uh, the uh, fitness and wellness group, uh, Joan Benson, Phil Doyle, and Lynn Ma uh, Mar Marino, Marano, uh, as new members in fitness and wellness and Marcy Tixer, Tixer, I'm probably doing wrong on the name, I, I apologize, as a new member into the golf committee. They were approved by unanimous consent. Uh, I'm just making sure that you're aware of that uh, and that's why that's on the agenda. That will be posted online with all other unanimous consents. So that's enough for that. All right, um, the next uh, presenter is Bobby Freer, and uh, Bobby is the chair, co-chair of our ALC. And Bobby is going to 
present ALC guideline revisions that hopefully we as a board will vote on. These revisions have been kind of been going around since about September and October to update our guidelines, the ALC guidelines. There have been, uh, there was, I should say, uh, member comments available for these revisions. That took place, nah, I can't remember, probably October, a little bit later than that. So typically in the ALC revisions, we always want to include homeowners in that discussion, and that has been, uh, been done on this particular document. So Bobby, I'm gonna turn it over to you, let you go through this. I really apologize because it's gonna be almost unreadable because there's so many words on so many of these particular changes. Hopefully we put a few uh, copies in the table in the back. If you can share one, that would be great. Uh, it is posted online, so if you don't see it up here and you go home, you wanna read it, it is posted online. So, Bobby, I'm going to turn it over to you and let you go through these revisions. Well, thank you. Do you want to hold it, or do you want to... I, I prefer... I only have one arm, so I, I prefer... <laughs> I prefer to use the, the speaker here. Uh, it's got to be close to you. Yeah, bring it down. There you go. Okay. Uh, can you hear me out there? Oh, good. Well, good morning, and uh, I'm here to talk to you a little bit about our proposed guideline updates. And if you would, go to the next slide, please. Our guideline uh, updates are in two parts. One is a revision to the fees and fines, which was posted for 30-day comment back in October, and we received 30 responses. Uh, the second portion are some miscellaneous, what we feel are non-controversial changes that deal with clarifications, law changes, safety issues, a couple of items that were missed in the last update, and uh, one item where we want to revert language back to what it was previously in the 2021 guidelines. So if you would, go to the next slide. Uh, the first item under the revision to fees and fines uh, deals with uh, new homeowners and their permits, which are required by the CCNRs uh, to at least have a permit to start work on their landscape within 90 days of closing escrow. The CCNRs read, read that it should be completed, but we give uh, extensions to those. Uh, and we were having trouble in the past with new homeowners even acquiring a permit to get started and waiting until after the 90 days had finished. So the, this change is uh, modifying the fine, increasing the fine in hopes that that will prompt new homeowners to at least get the permit and get started on their landscaping. If you would go to uh, number two, please. Uh, in the second one, we're uh, looking at weeds. Uh, big topic last, last summer with all of the monsoon rains and the previous year also. Uh, we seem to have too many snowbirds that leave for the summer and don't make provisions for maintenance to their yards when they're gone. So part of this is an impetus to try to get people to have someone look after their yards and take care of the weeds. And so in order to do that, we have proposed that the fine be increased. And you can read uh, the increase in the document here. If you would go to number three. In number three, uh, this has to deal with the fact that we do issue notice of violations when people uh, are in violation of the guidelines, and uh, this proposal, in essence, says escalating fines. In the past, we could issue a notice of violation which carries a particular fine, and if nothing was done, uh, nothing was done, and we could wait many months before uh, uh, any action was taken. So the idea here is if no action is taken, uh, we are going to escalate the fines in hopes that that will prompt people to actually make the modification that we request. Go to the next slide, please. 
And the last one deals, for, deals with uh, fines for work that is done without a permit or when a permit is acquired after work has been started. Uh, part of our charter is to make sure that all work is, is uh, done in compliance with the guidelines and if work is done without a permit or work is uh, the permit is acquired after the work has started, we can't always guarantee that that's happening. So these are fines to try, and increase in fines, to try to prompt people to make sure that they get the permits before they start work. So if you would, go to the next one, and this gives a tally of some of the comments that were made during the 30-day period. You'll notice that there's 55 comments and, and only 30 people responded and some people responded in multiple categories. Uh, and you can read down through here, um, at least a third of the comments uh, are uh, mistakenly thinking that, the, that we, the uh, ALC, are in charge of the common area. We're not. But it was also potentially a mistake because we had two 30-day comments going out in parallel, one dealing with changes to common area and one dealing with changes to ALC. So uh, it's kind of understandable that some of the comments maybe got mixed up. The remainder of the comments dealt with, as you can see in descending order, a, a few people thought that uh, some of the, the fines were excessive. Uh, wondering, are we trying to make up for the shortfall in the budget by uh, increasing our fines? Uh, and uh, uh, comments about the fact that the fees and fines are potentially not welcoming to new members of the community. Uh, and some specific comments dealing with weeds, some dealing with the time frame for initiating a new landscape if you have a new home. Uh, but all in all, um, very few comments, considering we have 2,500 homes, uh, in regard to these changes. So I'm going to move on now into the, uh, what, what I call the miscellaneous category. These are changes that we feel are non-controversial. The very first one is just a clarification. If you start to read our document, right away it talks about the CC&Rs. And we have no definition in the document about what CCNRs is or are. So the first one is just to add a clarification in uh, the very beginning of the document to make that definition. The second, uh, next slide, the second clarification deals with the, the intent throughout the document. Uh, the saguaro cactuses are referenced and it's the intent was always the native Sonoran saguaro, not the Argentina saguaro or some other variety of saguaros. So this next is a clarification throughout the document to change the wording to actually say native Sonoran saguaros. And if you go to the third, uh, next, the next one here, uh, this is a missed inclusion uh, in our last guidelines. Uh, and we have notes from one of our working meetings that we had voted to allow uh, individuals to put solar panels on their Ramada roofs uh, or back porch roofs, whatever you call that back patio roof, and uh, uh, as long as they're flush mounted. Uh, we have allowed this in the past. The law pretty much says if, if uh, a, an installer can demonstrate that uh, there is enough loss without, well, if there is enough loss of solar generated power, uh, you can put your solar panel just about every place, any place you can demonstrate that fact. So uh, we decided to allow this. Uh, if I remember correctly, HOA1 allows the same thing. And if we go to the next one, um, this is another uh, missed entry. Uh, and this had to do with, uh, I'm sorry, the next one is, has to do with a law change because uh, Pinal County changed the requirements in one of their bulletins uh, which indicated that you needed a solar permit now for a lot of the uh, additional ramadas that people were adding to their homes. The 
number used to be 1,000 square feet. If you were over 1,000 square feet, you needed a permit. And it's been changed now to 120 square feet. Significant change. Uh, so we're modifying the guidelines to keep up with the law. Uh, and the next one, please, is a safety issue. We had an occurrence this past summer where an individual was given permission to open up an area of their common wall that bordered the golf course. And it was about an eight to 10 foot opening that was made so they could build a swimming pool in their backyard, uh, which they did. Uh, but that gap in the wall was there for at least four months, if not longer. And to us, that was a safety issue. An animal could have wandered in and wandered into the hole. Uh, or a, an individual could have wandered into that area and wandered into the hole. So our, our revision is if indeed while you're working on something like this and no work is being done at that particular time, you need to put up some kind of uh, uh, safety gate or uh, fencing so that you can prevent accidents from happening. Okay, and if you go to the next one, uh, again, this is another option. I skipped ahead earlier. This is another missed inclusion from our last guideline. Uh, some of the newer homes in the preserve area have flat fronts, whereas a lot of the homes that we have that have been built previously, uh, the garage would stick out in front and the front to the home was, was recessed back further. Uh, and we have a, a requirement that courtyards uh, can be no further in front of the home than five feet. Well, if you have a flat front home and you, your front door is not recessed back, generally uh, past the garage, that gives you a, a, a five foot wide courtyard. Uh, we had people request, uh, can't we do, can't we, we would like to have courtyards too, but we would like to have it bigger than five feet. So uh, it, we went around and did some measurements and looked at the community and uh, decided and voted uh, that we would allow people to have the, the courtyards if they would like, uh, not with the 48 inch walls bordering the courtyard, but you could have a 24 inch high or 28 inch high knee wall uh, as long as you were 10 feet away from the curb. You know, not a few people took advantage of it, but uh, it, it opened it up and there were examples existing in the community where the five foot rule was uh, not being, what's the right word to say? Not being obeyed. <laughs> And if we move to the last one here, we have another correction. Uh, this is from Pinal County. Uh, we published the address of the Pinal County building in the guidelines. And of course, Pinal County moved, so we, we are updating the guidelines to change the address to go with that. And then the last one, if you go to the next slide, deals with um, what we would like to do is revert to the 2021 ACL guideline wording on appeals, the appeal process. A portion of this the board had already voted on uh, because the guidelines had been updated to say that um, you can appeal to the committee, but you cannot, uh, your, your appeal stops there. And the board felt that all community members needed to have the opportunity to appeal direct to the board after they've appealed to the committee if, they, uh, if their appeal is denied. So they had already voted on that, so that reverts back to the wording in 2021. And then we also had a, a discussion and felt that part of the wording there was a little nebulous in terms of is it, can I as a homeowner appeal to the board in, appeal to the committee in person or can I only do it on paper? And we felt that uh, if people wanted to, they should be able to appeal to the committee in person, which was allowed in the previous version of the guidelines, but modified in this latest update. So we just want to go back to the previous wording. Okay, uh, and uh, if you go to the next slide, that concludes the uh, modifications that we would like to make to the guidelines. And uh, I'm gonna turn it over to Dan. Thank you. Thank you. Is this on? Okay, cool. Sorry. Thank you very much, Bobby. That was a it was uh, 
Good, you went through everything, and um, again, the document has more words than Bobby was able to give us in this short period of time, but uh, she really summarized everything very well, so thank you very much. Uh, the first thing I'll do is to ask the board if you have any questions, maybe for Bobby as she's leaving us, but do you guys have any uh, questions for Bobby? I just have a comment, Bobby. I want to say thank you to you and your committee for this hard work. This was a lot of work. We appreciate your effort. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Bobby. Um, Good job, Bobby. I, I'll just comment because I've, I've been had the pleasure of being with ALC for the last uh, six months or so as a board liaison. And, the group really does a lot of good work, hard work, and a lot of hours committed. So there, there's uh, really wonderful uh, output from that group, and we see it every day in living here. Um, anyway, okay, so no comments uh, from the group. Is there a motion to approve these guidelines as they have been presented? So moved. So moved. Okay, Campbell did it? Is there a sure. second? I did. Seconded. Mark seconded it. Thank you. Is there any comment from the board? No comment. Is there any comments from the audience? This is a golden opportunity to put a plug in for new members. They need them. <laughs> Thank you, Duff. That's uh, I won't make you come down for that because that's, these guys do need more members. Um, but you know what? Thank you. That, that was good. A lot of our, a lot of our committees do as well. Any other comments from the homeowners? Hearing none, um, the motion is to approve the ALC guideline updates that have been presented to us. And um, assuming no more comments, uh, all in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Again, Bobby, thank you very much. Great job. Now, those guidelines will get approved quickly, or not approved, but updated quickly and be online. So the, you, for many, the guidelines are a very important document that needs to be referred to regularly. So I'm guessing we'll try to get that done in a few days or so and get those guidelines updated and online so homeowners can see them for reference as they make changes in their home. All right, the next thing that's on our agenda. Fine, you can have two more days. No, just kidding, good stuff. Uh, the next on our agenda is common area level four and five update. Uh, I'll preface uh, Walter and, and Anthony, I'm not sure exactly who's doing the presenting. Um, this has been going on for some time. This conversation uh, really started probably back in the middle of 2022 um, with lots of homeowner input. And it came to really a reality in the budget time and the budget process. So, um, yeah, we got to get going. Okay, so anyway, I just got a word that we got to be out of here by 12.15. So, we're going to move on. Walter, here you go. All righty. Um, this presentation is mainly for the board. They asked us to go back and look at the budget that we have for that they or the funds they allocated in the 2023 budget for the area for the common area level five maintenance. So I know there was some other discussion about combining level five, level four, but this presentation I have here really does not touch that. This focuses on the level five maintenance and how we would like to roll this out. So this is kind of a briefing for the board to present how common area can roll out this process of taking care of level five. Okay, next. Okay, here um, they asked us to go back and we had produced some maps to say how much um, area we think we could get the new equipment in if we bought heavy equipment, the caterpillars. 
And we went back, looked at it. It didn't change very much. Anthony went back over the maps. And so we figure that we can probably get, if we buy the heavy equipment, we can probably access um, about 60% of the community with the piece of equipment that we um, are looking to purchase. So next slide. All right, so um, what we're looking at here is bringing on two new crew members, which one would be a lead and one would be a workman, and then also purchasing the Caterpillar um, skid steer or whatever you want to refer to it as. So what we were looking at here is bringing on the two, man, two more um, crew members, getting the piece of equipment, and what we figure is we would probably, as we start out, you know, because we have, this is a new process, it may take us two years to get through the community, but our goal, and according to what the board would like to see also, is to try to get this rotation down to one year. But I'm not gonna throw common area um, that task right now for one year. I think uh, two years is probably gonna be needed for us to make it through the first um, rotation. So next slide. Just uh, typically what you would see after we get through, there's easy areas to access, which you know are not on a slope. There might be in between uh, two residents' backyards. You know, area five, we can get to it pretty easily. We can um, knock the weeds down, clean it up. There's other areas, like I said, that um, are gonna be more difficult. They're on a hill. They're difficult to get to. There's a lot of rocks back there, so. Those areas, again, 40% of the community we're gonna have to do by hand, even if we buy the equipment. So I think that's where we kind of slow down. The equipment will get us moving, but when we get behind these areas where we have to do it with just manpower, these two additional folks are gonna, it's gonna take them a lot longer to um, knock down that area that we can't get equipment into. Now, the board has also suggested, well, let's pull you know, maybe a couple people off of the um, behind the wall crew. So, you know, that's something that operations will have to look at and see if that's a, a possibility. All right, next slide. So what do the numbers look like? So this is just kind of recapping in numbers what I just said. We're talking about bringing on two crew members here. They've got to be supported with all their pieces of equipment, whether it's utilities, you know, all the chainsaws, the loppers, all of that. You know, they're no good unless they have equipment. And then below that is bringing on the big piece of equipment, the heavy piece of equipment here. And um, Don had got this information from the, um, the vendor from Caterpillar. So that's where that 141,000 comes from. And then we also determined that if you have this piece of equipment, it will probably be good to have a trailer so that we can move it between units instead of driving that piece of equipment between units, especially if we have to go up to the preserve. So. That's what we're looking at, bringing on two people, the equipment, bringing on this heavy equipment um, to get the level five going. Um, in my view, we may need more than the two crew members um, that we're talking about, but that won't be determined until after we get started and we start working. Um, again, kind of up to operations on how we um, attack this with the manpower, and we may not need the additional two but um, we definitely need two, but the, the additional two, that's yet to be determined. And again, let me just caveat, you know, our estimate is we can get to 60% of the community with this piece of equipment. As we go through, we may find different, and we don't know until we actually get started and get rolling. So our main issue here is, hey, let us get started, approve the two people and the equipment, let us get started and let's see what happens. Um, next slide, please. Okay, so just some more eye chart um, numbers. Bottom line is to start up for the first year, we're looking at probably about $326,000. Now guess what? If you look at our budget, we've got $439,000 $439, approved. So if we just stick with the two um, new crew members, equipment, and the heavy equipment, we should be coming in below what is actually in the 2023 budget. So, next slide. Okay. Uh, nope, go back, go back up. I had a recommendation slide built. Nope, you're going the wrong direction. 
Okay, just keep it there. Okay, so I don't know, I lost the slide here, but there was a recommendation, the recommendation to the board, Nan, from common areas is to go ahead and approve us hiring the two crew members and the equipment they need, you know, the hand loppers and all of that, and also the um, caterpillar. That is the recommendation from common areas. You can, you can, you can go back up, um, Joey, back to the... Okay, go back one more. You may need to speak into a microphone, Sean. All right. Uh, all right. Anyway, it's not there. Um, you can just you can just leave it there for right now, Joey. <coughs> yeah, just leave it right there. So that's that's um, our recommendation, Dan. Okay, I understand. Um, did you have a recommendation on level four two or no? Um, I do. It's really quick. So go ahead and go down to the next slide. Next slide. Next slide. Okay, so recommendation for level four. There was a discussion about allowing people to get behind the wall and do some of their own work in level four. I recommend to the board that we do not um, go down that road at this point. I want to be able to get the level five equipment in, get the level five crew in, and see how we do for the next two years as we start this, implement, start this process before we go to the point of allowing people um, behind the walls because I think we're going to be able to achieve with what we have now a consistent look behind the wall and I don't think we'll need to have people back there because that's just an additional risk to the HOA. So my recommendation for allowing people to work in level four is to hold on that and reevaluate that in about two years. Okay, thank you very much. Um, so you actually have a couple of recommendations here, one of which is the move forward on level five, which you outlined very well, and the uh, recommendation on level four in terms of uh, not allowing homeowners to access that property for, for any hmm. kind of work. So having said all that, um, I need a motion from the board uh, relative to staff's recommendation. Does anybody have a motion? I have a motion. All right. Don. I move that we revise the level four and five common area maintenance policy and maintenance plan as follows. Consolidate level four and five into one single maintenance area. Consolidate the existing six-man crew plus an incremental crew of two. Purchase the Caterpillar mini track loader with forestry mulcher to increase the productivity of the maintenance effort in these areas. The dealer quote for this package is approximately $141,000. Purchase additional equipment including utility vehicle and various hand tools for brush clearing and pruning, an approximate cost there of $28,970. The Common Area Maintenance Department will have the primary responsibility for the maintenance of these areas and no lot owners will be allowed to do any work or contract with any third party to do maintenance work in a common area. The goal of this plan is to achieve a one year rotation cycle of the designated level four and five areas. Due to the current level of overgrowth of the area, the initial work may take longer than one year for the first rotation. Wow. <laughs> that was a big motion. Thank you. I guess... Uh, well, the attorney told us to make them accurate. <laughs> yeah, okay, good. Um, are there... Is there a second to that motion? All right, Mark is seconding that motion. Everybody has a copy of it in front of you from the board perspective. Is there any comments attached to this motion? Yes, sir. Yeah, I, I sat down. Walter was kind enough to facilitate a meeting with Ray and with Anthony so I could come up to speed, being you all been working on this for a year. I support everything that Don's put here especially the last bullet. We should have a goal uh, after we figure out what we don't know about what we're asking Common Area to do here to achieve what's stated. So I have a problem with the first two bullets. I don't think we need to tell Common Area 
to combine level four and five at this time. It's my understanding that our current plan allows us to complete level four work annually. The concern here is if you connect four and five, it's probably gonna be a two year journey for us to get through five. So Walter and his team told me they would prefer not to put the level four work at risk as we roll out the level five campaign. Seems reasonable to me. That's why I like the goal part of this proposal. But I would accept this recommendation in total if we didn't tell them how to use their people and if we didn't combine level four and level five at this time. All right, any other comments? Dan, I think we need to also take into uh, account that unfortunately Anthony is leaving us and we're getting ready to hire another person and he or she may have some other ideas about how to make this happen. So I think we're putting the cart a little bit before the horse without having a new common area maintenance director on board. But I concur with Matt. Um, I don't think we should combine level four and level five. Um, and I think if we could accept this motion with the last four bullets, that would be reasonable to me. Any other comments? Yes, the objective of the motion is put forward came from discussions that we had uh, with Walter also. And what we're seeking here is just the maximum efficiency. We have six people currently in the crew to do level four, which is, correct me if I'm wrong, eight feet wide. And we're going to add a machine and one person to do the remainder, which is uh, an additional 30 feet, I believe it is, yeah, an additional 30 feet. Uh, so the, the view was that a reasonable approach was to combine all your forces into one maintenance team and you will go much quicker through it and uh, be much more efficient at it. So the purpose was to seek efficiency, not uh, anything but that. Any other comments? Just one clarification. If this motion, do we have to vote on it in its entirety or can we bifurcate it? Uh, you got a mode, you will vote on the motion that Don gave us. Okay. So what's in front of you is what you're gonna vote on. And I, if if uh, we deny that motion, yeah. then we can ask for a different motion. But right now we're gonna vote on that motion, which is what Don described. Well, then I want a subsidiary motion, sir, looking at our Robert's rules of whatever this paper is, to change or affect how to handle the main motion, and we should vote on that motion before we consider the motion that's on the table. So my subsidiary motion would be, we get to vote on bullets three through the end, and we say yes or no, and then we can go back to the original motion. Okay, I'm not a... I'm not th that technically capable. Well, I just studied Don's paper. Okay, good. So explain again what you want. I, it's my motion that we accept everything and Don's recommendation except the first two bullets. We can accomplish everything that we're trying to accomplish without those first two bullets. Combining level four and five, I've got no data other than the testimony of Walter, Ray, and Anthony that says to me they would prefer to keep it separate. True or false, Walter? That is true. And so they're the people we're asking to do this job. So I want to give them the job, and I want them to come back to us at some time in the future and tell us why we can't do bullets one and two or how we can't get to bullets one and two. But I, like you, sir, want to get this thing moving, and I think this is a very good motion if we take out those first two bullets. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I hear you. I, I do, and honestly... 
you may be correct from a Robert's Rules perspective, but I think it's a lot cleaner if we just vote on this motion, and if you disagree, then we'll get a different motion. Okay, sir. I think to me, I, I don't, and I just, you know, I guess I haven't studied it well enough to suggest. Dan, I want to call point of order. We need to Go vote ahead. on the motion. I'm sorry? Call? Point of order. We need to go ahead and vote on the motion that right. Don has That's presented. That's what I'm thinking too. Okay, uh, any other comments from the board? Any comments from the audience? No, you gotta come to the mic or the mic has to come to you. Mm -hmm. Good morning, I'm Sharon Beckman uh, from Unit 45. Um, you are correct, sir. There is, you need a parliamentarian, but you can amend the, the underlying motion and then vote on the full motion afterwards. But if you choose to do this, that is your choice. But, but again, in order to follow rules, rules of order, you must uh, allow a secondary motion to amend the underlying motion. So that's just my take. Thank you. So let me, let me just ask you. So if you allow a secondary motion, which is what you're describing, mm -hmm. do you then vote not on the first motion, but on the secondary motion? Right. So it's, vo it's basically a motion to amend the underlying motion. So you, he, would, he, would, he would make a motion to amend the underlying motion, <coughs> taking out those two bullets that you, you uh, object to, and then the board votes on that amendment, and then once that is clear, then the board votes on whatever is the result of that vote. Okay, so, thank so you. So you take it out, and then, and, and then you'd vote on what's left. Okay, thank you. So we'll go back. Yes. Oh my God. We got Duff Fletcher, there. Unit uh, 15, Lot 37. I think the issue here is people are concerned uh, that uh, combining the two is going to force a, uh, uh, the eight-foot strip to go into a two-year cycle this year. Uh, and I think there are going to be a lot of concerns about that. I would suggest one of the solutions is, uh, in combining them is fine. Uh, and uh, there may be a positive out of this, because if the combined unit was to do the eight-foot strip just after the weeds have sprouted, and it would not take them quite as long to do it with the additional manpower, uh, there would be a benefit from it. Uh, the, uh, but uh, to expect the eight-foot strip to go to a two-year cycle the first time, I think you're gonna get a lot of complaints on it. Thank you, Duff. Any other comments? I, I don't like the amending motion. Hi. Hello. Yeah, we could vote on this. Oh, okay. Hi there, Lori Tunney, Unit 24 here. I would just can like you to speak you into, speak the, into the, mic the mic so we mic. can hear you. I talk really loud. Is that loud enough? Can you hear me good now? Enough. Yeah, there you go. Um, Lori Tunney, Unit 24, new to the area, don't know what my lot number is. I do know this is, you cannot combine this in two year. Your crew just literally clear cut. My entire wash, native trees, five mesquite trees, completely cut down, made by Mother Nature, two Mexican bird of paradises. You still have not cleaned up the area. All the debris is still there. You've got people trying to walk through the wash. You got animals walking through there. We're getting stuck. We're getting cut up. So trying to just see what you've done in a small period of time. You're talking about native plants that we have to put in but you guys just go ahead and just clear cut. 
I come from the Pacific Northwest. I know what clear cutting looks like, and it is hideous the damage that you did to that area, and you should be ashamed. Thank you. Any other comments? I'm going to back up here and allow Matt to offer a subsidiary motion so we can vote on that subsidiary motion. And if that becomes, uh, if that moves forward, then we make that the motion. But Matt, I'll let you offer it. Thank you, sir. I would like to offer an amended motion to Don's uh, recommendation. I think Don has done terrific work. Uh, we wouldn't be in the position we're in without his work. All I want to do is take one, two, three, the last four bullets, make that the motion that we, f we vote on. We eliminate the first two bullets. We support the team that we're asking to do this work and staying in concert with them. And the last bullet allows us to have Walter come back and tell us when we can combine the two after we figure out what we don't know about what we're asking these, these people to accomplish. Thank you. Okay, to summarize what you just said, uh, the motion, uh, the subsidiary motion would be essentially what Don suggested with the exclusion of the first two points, right? That's yes. the summary of what you just said. Okay. Is there a second to that? Yes. Or go ahead. I second. Campbell seconds it. Uh, is there a discussion amongst the board? Uh, you got a, nobody has an opinion? All right. Is there any opinion or uh, comments from the homeowners? Okay, hearing none, we're going to vote on a sub, um, subsidiary motion that is in front of us and let me redo make sure everybody understands this motion says essentially purchase a caterpillar mini track loader and forestry mulcher to increase productivity cost 141,000 purchase additional equipment including utility vehicle and various hand tools to brush clear and pruning approximately 28,000 Common Area Maintenance Department will have the primary responsibility of the maintenance of this area and no lot owners will be allowed to do any work to or contract with any third party to do maintenance work in this area. The goal of this plan is to achieve a one year rotation cycle of the designated level four and level five areas due to the current level of overgrowth on these areas the initial work may take longer than the first year, one year rotation. That's the motion. Everybody agree? We talked about it, we voted on it, we got, nobody has a comment here, so we're gonna vote on it. All in Dan, favor? Dan, can I, oh, oh, oh. can I have a quick comment? So yes. That, so you, that last statement says that no one can work in the area. We do have that special request program would that cancel that special request program? Yes, it would. Just, as, just so we know for sure what. Board? Yep, it would. It okay. would, yes. All right, thank you. For clarification, uh, Diane, make sure you uh, note that, but the uh, permitted work would be canceled. Okay. I've asked everybody for a comment. Oh, we've got all the comments. Time to vote. All in favor of the subsidiary motion as I just read it, please raise your hand. All right, that is five. All opposed, raise your hand. Two. Motion carries. All right, we're moving on. No, you have to vote on. You have to vote on the original motion. Oh, you have to vote on the original motion. Ah, uh, okay. We're going to vote on the original motion. We've had time for comment. Any comment? The original motion as amended. As amended. No, we, we just voted on that. We already voted on that. We have adopted the amendment. Voted on the amendment. To say as amended. To say as amended. I don't know about all that stuff. Uh, 
What? Say the original just, motion as amended. We just voted on that. Ugh. But okay. you're reading the, the original. She's right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I see what you're saying. I apologize. So now we need to vote on the original motion as amended. There you go. Okay. So. Any comments? No, we went through that. Any homeowner comments? You guys got to be tired of it by now. Yeah. Uh, hearing none, all in favor of the original motion as amended, raise your hand. Got to raise your hand. Okay, we got four all in, all opposed. Two, motion carries. Thank you. Sorry for the long, arduous process. This isn't a typical thing, but I will be smarter next time. I can assure you that. Um, from a board perspective, unfortunately, we've had a lot of things on our agenda here today. We have one more uh, that's important, and that's board goals for 2023. Uh, I'm going to table that uh, only because we have to be out of here by basically 1215. And um, it's unfortunate that we've had so much stuff that's in here. So we're going to try to get on with uh, closing up this meeting. Is that OK with the board? We'll table the uh, goals. Uh, we'll deal with that a little bit later. Uh, we could, we could, potentially. A uh, couple of announcements before we adjourn. Uh, please come on January 30th at 10 o'clock here for the State of the County meeting. Uh, really a good, good thing. Um, I hope you can attend. Uh, we hold it almost every year, so you get a chance to rub elbows with your county officials. Um, next board meeting is yeah, February 22. Uh, general, off general manager's coffee is on March 1. Uh, Wednesday, March 1. He's skipping February. And um, I had a couple of other comments I was going to mention. If I can find my document. Sean, did you? I, I can't find what you had sent me. Did you have one, uh, one or two comments? No. <laughs> oh, you mean, no, I think we should pass on that so we can get on to the, what we need to okay. do. We can okay. do that next month, the board communications. Okay. All right. Hearing no further business by the board. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. One more last thing, uh, which is really kind of an important thing. We've gotten some, uh, I, I've gotten feedback and other board members have as well that, that homeowners uh, are being told that uh, for whatever reason, you can't park your vehicle on your driveway. Um, and, and they're being told that from a variety of ways. I don't know where it's all coming from, don't have a clue. But I think we need to be intentional in terms of making sure you understand there are rules associated to that. And I was gonna let Mark comment on that before we adjourn, so Mark. Yeah, the board asked me to just check because I've been involved a lot. And I just wanted to clarify for everybody that Parking on the driveways is completely acceptable and okay. It's supported by the rules. I'm not sure exactly what the perception was, but uh, the original CCR has defined the garages and carports and also state that additional parking areas can be defined by the declarant, Robeson, or, bo or the board, and those have been done. They're in the rules and regulations. You can read them, and clearly one of the additional defined parking spots is defined as a driveway in front of your home. So. It's black and white. There's really not any question to it. I just wanted to clarify that so that everybody does understand that if you're parking in front of your house, yes, you're allowed to park in front of your house. There are restrictions on the type of vehicle. Those are in the rules. You know, you can't park an RV permanently. You can't park a five-ton truck permanently. Those have always been in there, and those still apply, of course. But so anyway, just wanted to clarify that for everybody. Okay. Thank you very much, Mark. Okay, with that, uh, we will adjourn this meeting and open it up to homeowner comments. And again, I apologize, we've got about 15 minutes that we can do that. Uh, if you want to make comments, come up to the microphone, state your name and your lot number, and uh, you'll have two minutes for a comment. So, there you go.
Next. Yes, ma'am. Good morning. Oh, first of all, I apologize for shouting out to you during your, uh, your business meeting. <laughs> no, thank but I, you. I, thank do, you. I do I, encourage you. I do yeah. encourage you to um, familiarize yourself with Robert's Rules and Order because it makes a more orderly process for you. And I also encourage you not to open the comments to the audience during your business meeting and leave it to this environment where we can we can talk right. to you right thank so, you anyway good morning um, my name is Sharon Beckman and I live at 66970 East Wilderness Rock Drive and first I want to thank uh, the board for starting off the new year with a huge huge nod towards transparency by scheduling a monthly meeting for all membership to see online or to attend in person and for providing an open forum for members after the close of business. A number of us are taking advantage of this opportunity to speak to you this morning about a growing concern that we share about how our HOA both interprets and enforces the CCNR's rules and regulations. I think we can all agree that Saddlebrook is a very special place. All of us have traveled different paths to get here, but here we are sharing what can be one of the most rewarding and enjoyable parts of living life, and that's our retirement. Saddlebrook, we would argue, is Robeson's finest act of adult retirement community, not just because of the quality of homes that are built here, but because of the secluded desert enclave at the foot of the Catalina Mountains. Who else has such a spectacular setting? Our neighborhoods are lovely to look at. We are blessed with the peace and quiet of being in a remote desert location, as well as having friendly neighbors who respect one another's well-being, and we all want to keep it that way. You, as a board, have already discovered by now the challenges of keeping up with the expectations of the membership. Just by trying to keep our staff in place and our restaurants open, and frankly, the lights on. <laughs> So living just far enough north of Ina Road in unincorporated part of Pinal County, we rely on partnerships with professionals like Golder Ranch Fire District, with Pinal County Sheriff's Department, the County, Pinal County Public Works, and building safety departments just to provide basic level services. But we also now rely on professionals to operate our golf assets and their usage. But when it comes to promulgating new rules and regulations or enforcing them in the furtherance of protecting our wonderful Saddlebrook and preserving the aesthetic values of the community and the surrounding Sonoran Desert environment that Robeson Communities envisioned, we self-police. So it's really on us. It's on the core of volunteers like yourselves and those who serve on our com committees and keep our amenities staffed for clubs or residents who volunteer their time to patrol the streets of, the Sa of Saddlebrook. It's all on us to keep an eye out for each other and to say something when we see something wrong. Without all of us, Saddlebrook as a community is unsustainable. So I want to shine a light on some portions of the ropes and CCNRs and why they are critical for us to understand and embrace. Sharon, I'm going to tell you, you get about 30 seconds. Robeson crafted a platform of covenants, con conditions, and restrictions that underpin each of us. It's Arizona active adult retirement communities, and they are boilerplate. They are largely general statements that may well broadly may well be broadly interpreted, but they are laced with unambiguous language that speaks to the aesthetic values, architectural integrity, and non-discrimination amongst members in the, in the application of rules, ensuring that, and I quote, no nuisance shall be permitted to exist to operate on any lot, parcel, or other area in Saddlebrook Country Club number two. The architectural committee shall have the exclusive right to determine the existence of any nuisance within residential areas. Sharon, I gotta stop you. I'm sorry, I, I really went way past two minutes, but uh, I, I appreciate your comments, I really do. I have more. I'm and, sure you do. And, uh, and I sure would you. ask for an extension. It's just a little bit more because I wanna make my okay, point. Okay, I'm gonna, there's probably others that wanna speak as well, so I'll uh, sit down, if we got some more time, you can finish up. 
if you want, but I'm going to move to the next speaker. All right. Concede my time to her. Two minutes. That I'll just start. Where do you start? Two minutes. All right. In Article Five of the, I'm John Beckman, her husband. Oh, yeah. Close. Thank you, John. You got to yeah, get up to the mic that, so we that? can record it. Is that good? All right. I'm John Beckman. I'm on uh, uh, six six nine seven zero East Wilderness Rock, right across the street from the item in concern. Uh, basically, Article 4 in the CCR is from the Clearing invites the Board to further shape the community through adoption, the amendment, and the appeal of rules and regulations. Those are the rules. So, and what quote in there, in addition, from time to time, the subject to the provisions of this Declaration of the Architectural Committee with respect to the Saddlebrook Country Club Number 2 residential I shall have the right to adopt and amend and repeal those architectural guidelines. Provided, however, said rules shall be fair and reasonable. And I think we've all been talking about just being fair and reasonable. And shall be consistent with the provisions of declarations and audit bylaws, and shall be subject to the review and division of the board. The authority granted herein to develop rules and guidelines by the board and architect command, and the enforcement powers granted here are all given for the purpose of ensuring that South Country Club number two is developed and used according to the general descriptions. So, as members of the board, I submit to you that very little has changed since the first draft of the rules promulgated by the first authorized committee of volunteers who are directed by the first board to serve on uh, HOA 2. We submit it's now past time now that we have transitioned to explore the comprehensive set of rules that shape Saddlebrook, rules that are clear and specific enough that no member can misconstrue them, rules that are consistently apply to each member, and rules that are fair and reasonable. This morning, we were praising it with two petitions that ask you to take action. First, to write the new rules that are at the very least address fair and reasonable regulations of parking included in the driveways. For, we do not want to stop there. We are asking that you research extensive work that other community groups and communities like Pebble Creek and Goodyear have done to shape their communities through fair and reasonable rules. Secondly, we're actually enforce the rules whether means necessary to make sure they enforce quickly and equitably. Because without enforcement, our quality of life is unsustainable, and the value of our property is diminished. Thank well, you, John. Thank that's you. That's my two minutes. No, thank you. Perfect. Right on time. Thank you. Thank you for those comments. So, are there any other comments or questions? Hi. Hi, Lori Tenney back here again. I have a suggestion to possibly deal with some of the shortcomings and shortfallings you have and everything's about golf. How about this? Instead of ripping out all these beautiful spring flowers and planting them with annuals, planting them with perennials. Let's be sustainable, let's be relative and relatable. Here's the deal, you just use perennials. Here's another deal. Do you know how many master gardeners you have in your community? Part of our ethos is we have to volunteer our time back to the community. Give me the dirt, give me the plants, I'll do it. It slays me while I'm swimming. Yes, swimming, the polar bear club. We go swimming at 7.30 in the morning, you guys. We'll plant them. The look on the workers' faces when they're ripping those plants out. Come on, let's use the brain. And Walter, maybe I'll get another year. Thank you, bye. Thank you. Any other questions, comments? Hello. I'm actually kind of. I'm actually kind of tall. For a there you go. There you go. <laughs> hey, you thank go. you. Hey, um, in 2019, some of my neighbors contacted me about lights in the area. Those are the uh, cart barn lights. They're not dark sky compliable. Uh, I contacted the HOA, got a prompt response, appreciate that. But there's still nothing been resolved with them, and in fact, they've gotten worse. I think it's mainly worse, um, sorry, I've got a lung thing going on. Mainly worse, I think, maybe due to the lights being re-aimed or something like that. 
I totally support operations needing the lights. So we don't need to do that, but I think we can do both. It's a simple re-aiming of the lights or mounting them so that they're facing the clubhouse instead of the homeowners on Unit 45. In addition, I bring this up again, even though 2019 has come and gone and the lights are still there and worse, is because we're building that shelter. So I wanna make sure when we build the shelter, we don't compo compound on that problem. Put some fascia up, make sure the lights are shielded. The current lights are just work lights and if you just mounted them facing down or you mount them on the other side facing the other area, problem solved. So I just bring that up mainly because of the shelter coming up. I don't want it to become even worse even though it hasn't been fixed. Thank you. Oh, hold it, Mona, I missed. What facility are we talking about? Uh, we're talking about the preserved cart barn and what it is is there's really industrial work lights there and they're very, very bright and I brought it up several times before uh, over the years and I brought it up the first time because some of the homeowners had already contacted the board prior to that but were hesitant in uh, contacting the board so I said I would and I sent in a, a note got a very prompt response which I appreciate but since uh, we are building the shelter there let's think about it as we do the design not compound the problem in addition let's look at the problem and make it work for operations and for the homeowners because I think it's a fairly easy fix Thank you. Cool. Thank you. Thank you for coming up. I'm sure Walter's been writing that down. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm on top of it. Thank you, Mona. Okay. Um, is there any other comments? We have one minute to leave the building, but I don't know what happens at that minute, actually. Um, any other comments? Sure. Thank you, uh, and I will submit these written comments to, to, to you to distribute. But Good. Thank, thank finally, you. I, I want to address the process by which a member files a complaint. When we write a written complaint putting our names on the line for the good of the community, we expect a timely response and a timely resolution. A complaint about a specific nuisance and possible rule violation was filed in June of 2022 and again by nine additional complainants in December of 2022. It is being talked about on the Preserve website, on Nextdoor, on Saddlebrook GIO, and in the streets. But to date, we have had no response and no resolution. Because our community is self-policing, we have a duty to report and you have a duty to respond. If written complaints are not honored and answered, the quality of life we enjoy here in Saddlebrook is unsustainable and our property values are diminished. So I'd like to ask the board to resolve this problem quickly and I know you know what I'm talking about. In the coming months, we request that you assemble a rules committee that is balanced in perspective and begin an exhaustive review of the rules. We ask that the Rules Committee ha then recommend a comprehensive, fresh set of rules that reflect the way we live and, why we want th and the way we want to shape and preserve the values of our community. And then we ask the board to place an item on the agenda to discuss the committee's recommendations before the board approves them, because ultimately it really is on us, all of us, to protect Saddlebrook. And I thank you for your time, and I'm submitting this uh, okay, these, these thank written you. comments, and uh, there are two petitions. That's great. I will tell you that the complaint filed in December uh, is, is uh, something that we will respond to within the next few days. Obviously, it's taken us a little time to look into that complaint, and I apologize that that's not timely, but uh, I think we're trying to do our due diligence with regard to that. So. There will be a response to all homeowners complaints within the next few days on that particular issue. So, thank you all very much. Enjoy lunch and um, see you next month. She walked by and said something about something about Walter or something next year. Oh, I don't know what she said. I don't know. <laughs>